Good morning, good morning. This is the Patriot Trading News Hour. I am guest host Jason. I'm going to be joined with Brian. We're not going to be doing a whole lot of talking on the show. Uh, we want to uh, bring you a, a speech from 2012, a congressman named James Trafficant. I'm going to cover him for a brief moment or two, but to get the, the speech on the air, we're going to have to really uh, really uh, put a lot of it on the air. It's, it's such a strong speech. Uh, we really want people to know what a guy that that uh, as a man of action versus what we have in Congress and the Senate, you know, our, our, our local uh, politics is all about guys flapping their gums. This is a guy that is no longer allowed to be elected. We can't get guys like this uh, in there because they, uh, they want to mix up the government and, and make it for better for the people. We're going to run his speech. Uh, I want to come right, on the, uh, right at the top here. Uh, gold and silver and the metals, they're all having a pullback. It's been, been a while. It's been a while for a pullback. If you're one of those guys that's been waiting for a pullback, this is your day to buy. I am just going to hit you right away. We had uh, uh, Mid-State 63 St. Gaudens. We have a handful of those left. We are going to pull the price back $35. They were on the air yesterday for $16.50. They will now be $16.15. So if you want to buy one of those coins, the pullback, we're going to give you the pullback. You get to get those coins for $16.15. You call 800 nine five one zero five nine two we also have silver eagles you're going to get it uh, as low as we can sell it we have rolls of silver eagles for 445 and we have a monster box if you want the full box you're going to get it for ten thousand nine ninety below eleven thousand ten thousand nine ninety you can get rolls of silver eagles for 445 we're going to play this speech and you're going to listen to james trafficking uh, a, a true american uh, for the people uh, this guy, uh, it, it, listening to this speech makes me want to buy gold and silver. This is why, it's why I'm putting it on the air today. Uh, while you're listening to this speech, call up Arlene and Bugger and and just uh, give her give her too many uh, too many orders to, to to barely stay on top of. You guys need to to buy gold and silver when it's doing what it's doing. And it's, I'll tell you right now, this pullback will not be. Uh, this is not permanent. This is not the start of something. This is just the markets can never just go straight up. Here's a day. It's an opportunity coming into the weekend. It got, got today and tomorrow, and uh, Joe's gone for the week, so it's going to be myself and Brian doing the show. But jump on, 800-951-0592. I'm going to uh, J- – James Trafficant. If you don't know who he is, he's a uh, congressman from Youngstown, Ohio. He was sheriff there. He had to deal with the mob. He, uh, he went to jail for not foreclosing on homes. I'm going to let the speech, and I have a little promotional piece. There's a, there's a documentary that's going to be floating around out there. I, I haven't watched it myself. I don't really need to. Uh, this speech and then this little promo spot, this will pretty much tell you what he's all about. Uh, we'll, uh, Brian and I will try to speak a little bit about it, but to get this speech in, we're going to have to use all the, most, most of the airtime today. So, Brian, do you have a, a quick two seconds before I throw this on? Just the importance of the role of our elected sheriffs, our county sheriffs. That, that, just keep that in mind through this. Let me do the little promo spot. Here we go. This is from Jim Traffigan to the IRS and the FBI. Go. I'm just the son of a truck driver. Forget this Congress business. Jim was never a team player. He, I don't know if he was meant to be a congressman. Congress hasn't done their job. I love America, but hate the government. The American people are taxed off. He had a great sense of humor. The IRS has turned into a bunch of political prostitutes. You don't know which part's brilliant and which part's psychotic. Huge ego. They lie again and go over and kick them in the garage. Thank you very much. Do I wear skinny ties yet? Do I do my hair with a weed whacker? I admit. Look at my wide bottom pants, my boots, and I certainly haven't changed. Jim Traffigan was the congressman you'd get from Central Casting if the director was Quentin Tarantino. I'll kick your ass personally. It's bullshit. You're looking at a junkyard dog in the face of a hurricane. I want to thank Congressman Traffigan for the work he does in Washington. My district's one of the poorest, and those so-called rich people, I want to hire my people. In today's environment, he would be a presidential candidate. Jim Traffigan was the Mahoning Valley. We were the second biggest steel producing city in the world. In six months, over 50,000 men lost their jobs. When the mills closed, the mob then started telling politicians what to do. If you're interested in politics, the mob wants you then. He was the sheriff who was going to resurrect the town again. He was going to bring us back. The mob should get out of Youngstown. Crime Town USA, 
Youngstown would make the Sopranos look like Girl Scouts. Jim Trafficking was the white knight coming in to save us. We rode that right into the Congress. Beam me up! The noisiest act on Capitol Hill. But I'll be damned if I'll be pressured by government. Trafficking is charged with racketeering and bribery. His crocodile mouth got his hummingbird ass in trouble. I'm not going to admit the crimes that I did not do and will do the time and expect a long time to try and shut me up. Everybody's going to want to see. That's good enough there. We're, gonna, we're coming into the break here in a minute. I, I want to just fill in. So what, what happened to this man is uh, he was swept into office for uh, Congress because of his work as a sheriff and really protecting the people of, that, of his, uh, his county. And as as uh, as a congressperson, he he didn't know the way the government was run. He didn't understand the financial system the way that Joe talks about it every day. So he get, he went in as a Democrat in 1985. He's there for a couple of terms, and then in 1993, he found out the real truth. He helped yeah, Bill Clinton get elected in 1992. I thought that Bill Clinton and his ideas were were going to be great for the country. And by 1993, he heard a NAFTA was coming. He saw what Bill Clinton was really about, and he started just going against government. He just started talking about what the people need, not what the government wants. He started seeing these bloated government agencies. And the speech that we're going to run is is going to talk about all of this stuff. And we'll, I want everyone to stay tuned and listen to this thing because you're going to be mighty impressed with what we could have as leadership if we were allowed to elect these guys anymore. And uh, Brian, yeah, I guess you can concur, right? Amen to that. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Your fill-in host, Jason Brian with a Y. Coming from Colorado at you here. Uh, one more time, the specials. We'll try to hit it real quickly. A couple more, maybe one more time. We've got $20 MS-63 gold pieces, uh, St. Gaudens. Uh, we dropped the price to match the pullback. Those are now at 1615 That's 1615 a coin. Also have rolls of Silver Eagles at 445 So give us a call toll-free, 800-951-0592. Jason? Yeah, I didn't get to finish a little bit about James Trafficking. I'm going to put this speech on from 2012. Uh, the man died in a highly suspicious tractor accident in 2014. He was voted out of Congress in 2002, 420 to 1. I scarcely think that if Nancy Pelosi murdered someone on national television, if they would have voted her out 420 to 1. But that's what happened to him. He was uh, he's brought up on corruption charges. He was he was shaking it up. He he upset the Democrat uh, the Democrat Party. Yeah, he he only wanted to make things right. Uh, those years that he was in there, and they put him How in prison. Would they look at the medical records, if if it was even available, of all of those Congress people that voted against him. Yeah. Medical records, criminal records, just 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 for a basis of reference. Correct, and and so uh, in two in two thousand two, he went to a prison. He was there for seven years. They put him on battery recycling detail, the the top most toxic job he probably could do in the prison at that time. Uh, obviously trying to get rid of this guy. He gets out of prison in 2009. He immediately hits the circuit, starts talking to people about what, how to stop the government from doing what it's doing. And in 2014, when pro- probably he may, have been the, he may have been the real Donald Trump that could have been running for president in 2016, he has a tractor accident. So uh, this is what happens if you actually work for the people and you're against this system. So let's do the, uh, let's do the speech. I'm going to put it in. Our Sharon Stage, Jim Connie Jr., another great guy. <laughs> Mr. Mr. James Traffic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not going to take too long, I've had it. I listened to the sheriff up here and brings back the old days when I was a sheriff. Uh, something maybe you don't know. I was the sheriff in Ohio. That when we lost all those steel working jobs and all those factories in Youngstown, they were foreclosing on all these homes. And a black woman come to me, and her husband had died, and they had a 30 year mortgage. They paid 24 years. She missed one payment, and the bank moved to foreclose. So I looked at that and I said, Get out. Now remember now, this is in the early 80s, and the interest rates were 14%. I mean, you could borrow money cheaper from the mafia than you could from the banks. This ain't no joke, it's a fact. Interest rates are 14%. And she had about a 4.5% mortgage. So just think about it. They get rid of that 4.5%, someone else takes the home, they're going to get big bucks. So I looked, I called my staff in and said, what can I do to help them? Because I realized now... There were a bunch of foreclosures coming. 
And they said, Sheriff, the law is clear. Now, Sheriff Christopher mentioned this. Whenever you see in the law, the sheriff shall. The sheriff has no discretion. He must, or he violates the law. So he said, I said, well, how is this going to work? They said, well, the bank will foreclose. But I have to sign the transfer deed to finalize that foreclosure. They said, that's right. I said, well, I'm not going to sign the transfer deed. They said, the law says you shall sign the transfer deed. Mm -hmm. So this dumb jackass trafficking said, sign this. And I didn't sign the transfer deeds. They put me in jail. What I didn't know is there was around the clock people that were out circling the jail protesting my imprisonment. The next thing you know, the bankers with the judge brought me into the office rather than do it in an open court. And they made an agreement to hold off on those rather hasty foreclosures and give people a chance to work it out. From there, I don't know if Jim knows this, I was invited to CBS News and Diane Sawyer and Morning News interviewed me about that issue and they put pressure on Congress at that time to deal with that. Now, when I was elected to Congress, one of the first things I did was I passed some laws and one of them was the creation of housing counseling programs with a provision in that when a mortgage becomes 45 days delinquent, the bank shall give notice to the mortgage holder, to the borrower, with the number of a government created housing counseling program that they could call that will then sit down with them and the government and the bank and work out the mortgage. I passed that. I didn't get much good press being honest about it, <laughs> but they said this was a great program and it helped save a lot of homes. Also maybe something you don't know, and I was talking about that earlier with with Pete, Nas, a couple other people, but I'm looking around for Paul. No, no, just stay there. I don't want to forget this. I am down here out of respect for Paul. And I'm down here out of respect for the people. It's very apathetic, like the sheriff says. But if there's one, like Paul, then there'll be more. And that's what it will take. So I want you to know, Paul, that I'm here out of respect. And I appreciate you inviting me and, and giving me such fine hospitality. Now, and I see Milton sitting back there. How you doing, Milton? Read my, when you read in my book, in the beginning, the bankruptcy of the United States of America, that speech that I made in March of 1993 is being printed in books all over the world, and it lays out the blueprint of what the financial situation and the legal tenants are dealing with our Federal Reserve and our whole finance mechanism. Keep this in mind, no one ever challenged that speech. You read it. In 1998, we had a bill to come before Congress called the IRS Reform Bill. For 12 years, I was working on a significant change to the tax laws. Up until 1998, if you went to court for an IRS problem, tax problem, you were considered guilty and had to prove you were innocent. Now, the government will say, that's not true, traffic, and if it was a criminal charge, the government had to prove it. Forget that. 96% of all tax court cases are civil law. And under civil law, the taxpayer had to prove they're innocent. For example, and I'm going to dramatize something for you. Family of four at dinner, two children under the age of eight. 
The wife says to the father, John, call the accountant. I'm scared to death. We get our second notice from the IRS. We owe him $54,000. He said, Martha, not at dinner. John, you keep putting it off. I'm a scared. Don't you understand, John? I'm, I'm afraid. Martha, we don't owe that damn money. They're just pressuring us. I'm not going to pay it. John, call the accountant. I talked to him. He said he thinks he could settle it for 15000 Do that for me, John. Let's get it behind us. I'm afraid. John pays the 15000 He has to borrow it. If there's somebody making noises behind me, I'm getting worked up over that. The IRS comes before committees of Congress and says, the only way we can collect a voluntary tax is with the element of fear. Fear. United States of America, fear. The only way we can do business and get people to pay their taxes is fear. Think about that. Twelve years, Jim, the trafficking burden of proof case was before the Democrats. Jim Trafficking and Dan Rosnikowski, bitter enemies. Almost had a damn fist fight. Republicans take over, now they're going to reform the IRS. Well, when the moment of truth come, they said to me, Jim, we can't include the burden of proof because the IRS will recommend a veto to Clinton and we'll come back and look at it later, Jim, but we don't want to stop our bill. And I said on the House floor, I'm going to vote for it because it's a feel-good bill, but it isn't going to do a damn thing. It passed the House, and I got a call the next day from the chairman, Bill Archer, Republican from Texas. And if George Bush... The son would have named Bill Archer his Secretary of Treasury. He wouldn't be in this mess today. Chairman Archer called me and said, Jim, we have been overwhelmed with phone calls and messages that people are upset. They want the traffic and burden of proof change. And Jim, listen to what he said. Almost first time in history. Because the House passed the bill without it, the Senate passed the bill without it. So when it goes to conference, how do you confer? It's not even in it. He said, Jim, I'm going to put your burden of proof in the conference report. Stand up guy, Bill Archer. And he put it in. Now I did the Robert Novak show, and I don't know if you remember Robert Novak. He's now deceased. He was a very conservative talk show host. He said, I'm for you 100%, Jim, but the IRS is now recommending a veto to Clinton. He says, I don't think it's going to make it. What do you think? I said, Robert, they do not call Bill Clinton slick willy for nothing. <laughs> he could veto the bill and help the IRS workers, or he could sign the bill and help the American people and the American voters, and slick willy is going to sign this bill. Well, slick willy signed it. Let me tell you the statistics now. They did a study 12 months later, after one year. And here's what they did. They looked at statistics 12 months before the bill, and they looked at statistics 12 months after. There were three major categories affected, all of them by the traffic and burden of proof. Because here's what the traffic and burden of proof said. The IRS comes to you and they audit you, and you don't tell them go to hell, but you provide the information they want and they're not satisfied and they litigate as soon as it goes to court, the burden of proof is on the government. Now, the IRS commissioner said, 
I'm going to go. I'm going to get ready for the break here in about a minute. He's, he's going to give these statistics about uh, how how quickly things were improved after passing this bill. Uh, I didn't want to uh, hit the the stats in the middle, so we got to take these commercial breaks. So, uh, Brian, you've heard this speech now, and uh, I'll give you a few seconds here before we go into the break. No, just just such important topics and and the way the government is supposed to work. The federal government is supposed to work as opposed to the buddy club that we're not in. That uh, that we've heard, you know, we've talked about that before. It's 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 refreshing, but it's also disturbing. Yeah, and you got to remember, uh, as you're listening to this, uh, he was brought up on charges uh, and and charged with crimes. He was he was expelled from the house, 420 to one. He wasn't going to leave. They had to get rid of him, and then uh, put in prison for seven years. Got out of prison and kept on fighting. You know, son of a truck driver. Yeah, son of a truck driver. <laughs> And uh, so we're going to bring this. We're going to. He's going to have his stats about the trafficking bill. He's going to talk a lot more about just all. You know, I say almost everything he hits is important. Important things. Uh, one, one, one more time. We are Gold and Silver Company. We got uh, Silver Eagles at 445 on a big dip day. The, the prices of metals are down. You can buy a monster box for 10990. Great way to buy on a down day. Sixteen hundred and fifteen dollars for a mint state sixty three St. Gaudens. Call eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, the conservative pro family broadcast of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a leading voice for the sanctity of life, traditional education, the Constitution, and American sovereignty. And now from the archives of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, here is Phyllis Schlafly. The institution of marriage as the union of one man and one woman has been fundamental to America ever since the founding of our nation. The very first national platform adopted by the Republican Party in 1856 condemned polygamy and slavery as the twin relics of barbarism. In recent years, there have been widespread attacks on marriage. The gay rights attack calling for laws to recognize same-sex couples has received the most publicity. The radical feminists have always been very anti-marriage, which is why they called their movement women's liberation. Liberation means liberating women from marriage, and so the feminists were the chief lobbyists for the unilateral divorce laws passed by all 50 states during the 1970s. While both those groups want to change our laws, a third attack is coming from some libertarians who want to change marriage by denying government the right to set any standards or benefits for marriage. They think marriage should be only a private contract between two people and none of the government's business. I believe the government has a proper role in protecting marriage and that government should defend its proper definition. The primary purpose of government exercising control over marriage is to establish clear responsibility of the father as well as the mother for caring for those little bundles of helpless infants who appear when men and women do what comes naturally. If the government fails to set standards for who may be married and allows personal contracts to be the only criterion, there would be no grounds to deny marriage to those who want to marry a child or a sibling or more than one wife, practices that are widespread in some other countries. Yes, the government has a very important role in setting the definition and the standards for marriage. And we should resist the libertarians who say that marriage is none of the government's business. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report with Ed Martin, president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Freedom of worship and the right to express our faith and read our Bibles is foundational to America. At phyllisschlafly.com, we promise to track mounting threats to the free exercise of religion and equip you to fight back. Your defense begins at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Welcome back to the second half of the Patriot Radio News Hour with your fill-in host, Jason and Brian with a Y here. Joe is out of the building, but we'll be back Monday, Lord willing. Uh, we've been, Jason's been running a, a, a video or audio from a video of a former congressman, Jim Trafficking, a Democrat from Ohio, uh, just kind of a standout, standout congressman that if only we had a, uh, a bigger, a bigger group of these renegades, I think things might be different and we might be seeing some different effects at the federal level. Jason? Yep, and we're going to keep on going to fit this thing into the broadcast. So here we go, a little more from James Trafficking. Debate with me 
through the Wall Street Journal. If you put trafficking's language in there, deadbeats are going to get over. We're going to lose a lot of money, and the IRS is going to have to have vicious investigations. I said, why? He said, because people aren't going to pay. I said, cite an example. It was an interim commissioner, a woman. She said, okay, I want you to imagine the guy says he gives a thousand dollars a week to the church. We have to go to the bank. We have to go to the church. We have to go to his neighbors. We have to do a net worth. We have to do a lifestyle profile. We got to go to his friends. I said, why? Why don't you ask for a receipt? Why don't you go to the church and see if it's real? And then listen to what she said. How in God's name, Mr. Trafficking, can the IRS prove a negative? And listen to what I said. How in God's name can a taxpayer prove a negative? You're bringing the charge. You should be able to carry the damn burden in a court of law if, in fact, they owe that tax. Don't give me what I told her. Now listen to this. The bill signed into law. Twelve months later, did a snapshot study. The first twelve months, the last twelve months with the old law, the first twelve months with the new law, first category, garnishment of American workers' wages. Under the old deal, when the taxpayer had the burden of proof, 3.6 million Americans had their wages garnished. Twelve months when the taxpayer burden of proof shifted to Uncle Sam, 560,000. Now hear me. 3.6 million? One half million. Three million Americans all of a sudden don't have no more wages garnished. Second category is property liens. If you're a businessman, the government liens your property, the IRS liens your property, you're out of business. You have no credit, no line of credit, nothing. When that landowner had the burden of proof, 670,000 property liens by the IRS. When the government had the burden of proof, 161,000. But listen to the big one, folks. Individual family-owned homes seized by the Internal Rectal Service. Under the old law, where taxpayer had the burden of proof, 10,077. The new law, the government had the burden of proof, 57 homes in 50 states. One per state. Now, I talked yesterday about Get rid of it. There's no freedom here. We're not free. How many more taxes are you going to impose? How many more names are you going to come up with them? Now we find out the penalties are tax. Service fees, they're tax. Tolls, they're tax. They're all taxes. So abolish it all, throw that damn tax code out. Abolish the Internal Revenue Service, go with the flat consumption tax. No more forms, nothing. The government don't withhold your pay and decide how to spend it. They give it to you, you decide how to spend it. Rich people can't avoid the tax. Everybody pays the tax. Those people on the bottom end of the ladder, are they going to get welfare? No. Will people get unemployment compensation? No. They'll get a job from the government until they're back on their feet. Period. Listen to what I'm telling you. Where does it come from now, that unemployment check? Where does that welfare come from now, from the general fund? If you're under the poverty level, you take your pay stubs if you choose to the government, and you qualify for assistance, and the government will give you a part-time job. Take care of your family, so you don't have to break up and get a divorce to keep your housing. 
We've destroyed families with our policies. We've created dependence. I was in politics for a long time, folks. I never had anybody come up to me and say, Mr. Traffigan, help me get welfare. Here's what I heard. Mr. Traffigan, help me get a job. Help me get a job. When you throw out this income tax and this country becomes friendlier for business, throw out capital gains and corporation taxes, they say, Jim, these corporations, they got to pay taxes. Do you really think they pay the tax? If this cola is a dollar, you're paying a corporation tax when you bought this cola. They just pass it on to you. Throw it out. Throw out the capital gains. We want you to invest and make money. Because if you can make money in America, you're going to invest. And when you invest, you're going to create a job. Freedom is getting the yoke off our back. What do we need a Department of Energy for? Most of the young people here may not remember the gas lines of the 70s. People had to wait in line because gas was rationed. Though we found out later they were withholding big tankers on the ocean to drive up prices. All right, we're getting ready for another break there, Brian. He's, he, he's going to start talking about uh, these uh, these government uh, organizations that have uh, are start start to suddenly appear uh, over time, right, Brian? Yeah, all these bloated bureaucracies that all, may have had a may have had a good uh, rationale for instantiating them in the first place. But my, my, my advice would be if you're going to uh, seriously look at candidates uh, at all levels. Uh, me personally, if I you know if I ever talk to these guys, I, I ask them if they're going to get rid of the Federal Reserve. You want to? Hey, w- would you be interested in getting rid of central banking? If you can get rid of the 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 biggest culprit, the biggest bad guy in the room, the debt creation monster, everything else starts to fall in line real quick. Guys like James Traficant show up in Congress. You start actually getting guys elected that won't be uh, threatened out of Congress, and we can things can be fixed. But you know, you, you do not have control of your economy. You do not have sovereignty. You, you know, a country that doesn't uh, control its uh, its money does not have sovereignty. You owe, you are in allegiance. You owe somebody, and uh, that's James Traffic is one of those very few guys that uh, was was fighting this system until he had a an unfortunate traf- tractor accident in uh, 2014. We'll be right back after our commercial break. Welcome back. I've been running a uh, audio from a video an impromptu speech of a uh, congressman of Ohio, Jim Traffic, and Jason, kick it off. I will. I'll, I'll put it back on. By the way, if you do like us guest hosting and bringing shows like this, let Joe know so that uh, uh, he, he can relieve his mind. I think there's a, he has a little stress when he lets somebody else take control of the show. So if you like it, uh, give him a call on Monday. You can, you can leave a message to Arlene when you're buying your, your silver at 445 today. Uh, for a roll of eagles, you can uh, you can call eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two and let them know if you like uh, the guest host. So let me let me get back to James Traffickant. But because of that crisis, the government created a Department of Energy. The reason for creating the Department of Energy is to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. It is now 2012. We have more dependence on foreign oil than we had in the 70s. American people don't understand what's happening. What's for dinner, Martha? And man, you better wake up. What do we need a Department of Education for with all these federal jobs and money? Congress could set some standards. For example, have to have so many whatever to graduate got to be fair to everybody but eliminate the department and let the states run it the states created the federal government the federal government did not create the states the federal government should deal with international matters with national security national economic policy environmental protection same thing set standards the states run it throw the hell out What do you need these government workers for? I laughed when about a year ago the government came out and said, we're turning it around. 
450,000 new jobs. Then the report came out a week later that 432,000 of those jobs were part-time census workers. Yeah. What do we need it for, folks? Throw it the hell out. Now, when the sheriff was talking about one thing, I just want to share one other thing with you because I asked Curly to remind me of this, and he didn't, and I'll have to reconcile this issue with him personally. And I don't know where he is. He's probably inside hiding from my wrath. When I was sheriff, we had a situation where a man in a greenhouse on the lower north side of Youngstown, Ohio, was shot with a taser. Now a taser puts a couple electrodes in you and in fact it knocks you out. And they said the FBI saved his life because they come in and he was wrapped in duct tape ready to die and the FBI saved him. Well something seemed funny to me because how was he still alive? And we found out was he squeezed off a couple shots because he had this little business. He was an older fellow. And Paul, one of the electrodes hit his belt buckle, so only got one of the jolts. And he was still halfway functioning. So when the FBI got there, they apprehended the people that were wrapping him with duct tape. And I thought, you know, this just doesn't sound right. Why would they want a signature hit, which is a mob-style murder, on a guy, a nobody, on the north side of Youngstown. Well, about a week later, into my office, a guy comes in and wants to see me. He's the guy that got hit with the taser. An old broken English, an old Italian fellow, he's sheriff, he said, the FBI stole all my valuables. So what are you talking about? He said, my antiques, my clocks, I said, give me a statement. Gave me a statement. I conducted an investigation. And here's what I found out. At the night that this happened, there were 21 FBI officers guarding a home in a nice district in southern Mahoning County. 21 FBI agents surrounding a home. Then the FBI report come out that they had these three guys already in advance and they had a microphone memorialized in the blow car, the car that was used. And they knew what they were going to do. Then when I further investigated with the people in the community, they said they saw that car, the FBI car, going around the block. Ladies and gentlemen, if that taser wouldn't hit that belt buckle, that old man would have died. And what it was, there was a mob hit on the guy in Southern Mahoney County. The mob didn't know it. The mob went ahead, and they were going to have this man killed, wrap him with duct tape. Phone call would be made. When the FBI heard duct tape, they'd all rush there, and they'd have killed the guy in Southern Mahoney County. So what did the sheriff do? You know, we're getting ready for commercial break. We're going to have one more segment. I'm going to uh, conclude his story of uh, how he stands up to the FBI. Uh, uh, courageous. This is not Trump blowing his uh, blowing bravado and, and saying a bunch of stuff. This is this is standing in in court in court standing up to these guys, right, Brian? Yeah, not 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 that they're sending tweets. Nice idea, but exactly. And, 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 and to contrast, someone like Traffic, and I think it's safe to do this because both men are no longer with us. Uh, James Traffic compared to John McCain. Um, yeah, <laughs> you guys in Arizona had had the uh, the pleasure of John McCain for all those years. Us here, in, for you. us here in Colorado, you know, you, you, when you're voting Republican, you're you're happy that there's a Republican there. But uh, and Brian and I, are, as, as we're concerned, it's about the right guy, not the right party. And uh, and James Traficant was a Democrat, ended up being an independent towards the end because he he wouldn't vote all these Democratic policies in. 
and uh, great guy. Great. I mean, this is the kind of man that you want. This is like John Wayne being elected to to, to the House of Representatives, and uh, he was. I mean, he 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 went down on the sword. He he, he uh, fell on the sword for this. So, and, and like you said, JC, I, well, I mean, covered already. He started out uh, as a sheriff and and had had some real life experiences and demonstrated his his attention to stand up for the common man. We're gonna come back. Uh, we'll. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll hit the gold and silver towards the end of the show. We've got to call in, 800-951-0592. Gold's down 35, silver's down a bunch. This is the time to, to buy. I don't think this is going to be a permanent down cycle. You might want to jump on. 800-951-0592. We'll be right back for the last segment. Final segment of the Patriot Radio News Hour. Once, one more time, we've got $20 MS-63 St. Gaudens for 1615 and we also have rolls of silver eagles for 445 uh call and get those while they last 800-951-0592 jason you want to continue with what we got left i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna try to finish it off we have just barely enough time so we'll probably take it all the way to the end of the show here's james traffic he's going to talk about how he stood up to the fbi uh, on, a, on a mob hit murder where, where the mob is in uh, control of the fbi in his district took 23 fbi officers for a probable cause charge in district court in cleveland I charged him with theft in violation of his civil rights. Yeah. And that FBI come in there, and let me tell you how worried they were. They send in a deputy director of the Justice Department to represent him. And that FBI was sitting there looking at the witnesses, and you'd see police officers come up. They're intimidating, their voice is cracking. I got to stand, I told him, listen, I catch you doing something wrong in my county, I'll put your ass in jail, you understand? Yeah. And that's what a sheriff should be. But I said, you rip this guy off. But now listen how these courts work. Paul, this was a decision, so help me God, someday it's going to come up somewhere in a trial. To get them out from under the gun, the court ruled that yes, the sheriff is right. When the FBI took custody at 9 o'clock p.m., all the items were present. When the FBI left at 1.10 a.m., the items were gone. But the sheriff cannot put any of these items in any one particular hands. Therefore, he says, I have to drop the charges of theft, even though they robbed them. On the violation of civil rights, now listen carefully, Jim. He said under Ohio law, an FBI officer is number one, not a policeman. And number two, he's not a civil servant. Therefore, there's no violation of civil rights. I stood up and said, what the hell is he, an extraterrestrial? But now I want to just tell you, as a sheriff, something I'm very proud of. This Justice Department guy stood up after the ruling. He says, Your Honor, I've submitted a motion to the bench. So I get a copy of it. And, and this Justice Department big shot says, Your Honor, I want a restraining order on the Sheriff of Mahoning County. He said on public television he was going to surround the FBI office with a hundred armed deputies and come in and take our files and interview and find out what the hell's going on around there. He said, we can't have that, and I want a... And before he got done, the judge says, Mr. Porotz, Mr. Porotz, please, please. He said, do you want it on record that the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the United States Justice Department wants an official restraining order to keep the Mahoning County Sheriff away? <laughs> Do you really want that on the record? And this guy sat back and thought for a minute, yeah, that wouldn't look too good. He said, watch this, he said, maybe you're right, maybe you're right, Your Honor. Uh, I withdraw the motion. Then he looked over at me and he said, but I'm telling you, sir, if you do one thing, and I stood up and I said, that's intimidation under Ohio law ports, I'll put your ass in jail too. The judge hit the gavel, and it was all over, and it was like part in the Red Sea. That'll do it for today. Uh, everybody have a good day, and we'll be back tomorrow.